May the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight, O God, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. From the second movement of T.S. Eliot's The Four Quartets, from Burnt Norton, garlic and sapphires in the mud clot the bedded axle tree. The trilling wire in the blood sings below inveterate scars, appeasing long forgotten wars. Advent is the season of waiting, of being attentive, aware, of listening and perceiving, apprehended uh, apprehending or being apprehended of silence, of stillness and movement. of the singular awaiting the plural of the wilderness the desert place through which we wander it is very very difficult for us to grasp or be grasped by wilderness. Wilderness was the one place you did not want to be in the ancient world. It wasn't like Rancho Cucamonga. 90 miles to the east of us, Palm Springs, Rancho Mirage, are places of civilization. Well, at least I've been told they're places of civilization. They're not wilderness. They're not desert as they used to be in the ancient world. And so it is very difficult for us to comprehend what St. John the Baptist is all about. Because we have domesticated so much of the gospel so much that is at the very root of our faith. In the wilderness, the boundaries, we're not sure where they lie. In the wilderness, it's much like one's bedroom at dusk. During the day, we can see our way around the bedroom very easily, and we can see, oh, there's a chair there, or there's an ottoman there, or there's a dog lying there. We step around them. At night time, in the darkness, we do not see where we are. And so we stumble and fall. We are not aware of where the boundaries lie. And of course, in the darkness, the coat on the back of the door takes on a terrifying outline. It's only a coat on the back of the door. It's a dangerous place, the wilderness. It is untamed. It is the home of beasts and wild animals. Fortunately, we do not have to go out into the wilderness to encounter the divine. 
all to be baptized or to repent, as did all Judea and Jerusalem at the time of John the Baptist. And that's what finally sparks today's outburst. When he sees all the Sadducees and the Pharisees, the religious establishment, go out into the wilderness, he was profoundly against the establishment of official religion. He was the prophetic voice in the wilderness. And so when the establishment goes out to meet him, who hath warned you, O brood of vipers? And we've lost that today. We've lost the sense of the second coming. We've lost the sense of judgment. We've lost the sense of he will thoroughly purge. He will burn with unquenchable fire. We have lost the sense of hellfire. I have never, I was hearing yesterday, heard hellfire preached from an Episcopal pulpit. Well, now you have. <laughs> it's there in the very roots of our faith. There is rest and peace and sleep. There is the domestic, the home, but there is also the wilderness. God is both our refuge, but also the one who inspires us to move forward, to pilgrim, to travel, to journey with God's people through Exodus, through the wilderness into the promised land. That's there at the very root of our Anglican communion, of the Church of England. I was only thinking this morning at the eight o'clock mass, as I was reading Thomas Cramer's great long canon of the mass, which goes on forever. It's an argument. He's having an argument both Catholic and Reformed, both Protestant and Roman, you can hear it in his phrasing. The real presence of the body and blood of Christ, and yet he wants to use the word memorial. He wants to be reassured to know that his sins are forgiven, but he also wants to be inspired. He wants judgment, the moment of crisis, the moment of crisis, he knows that one cannot domesticate the Lord, the God of hosts. We live in a culture of constant noise, permanent lighting. Try and, try and find somewhere that's dark. You can't, not in Los Angeles. Everywhere is lit. And so because everywhere is lit, we don't know what it means to have the path lit before us because everywhere is illuminated. Go to Zion National Park or uh, the Grand Canyon in that direction and one escapes the sort of urban sprawl, the light that's constantly around us. And one does then begin to understand what the pillar of fire by night and the pillar of cloud by day actually meant. It's part of the vision that grips Isaiah. The wolf also shall dwell with the lamb. You do not put wolves and lambs together. The leopard shall lie down with the kid, the goat. A very dangerous thing to do. The calf and the young bear 
shall feed. Their young ones shall lie down together. And the lion shall eat straw like the ox. And the suckling child shall play on the hole of the asp. And the weaned child shall put his hand on the cockatrice den. Cockatrice. We need a few more cockatrice. They don't exist. They're mythical beasts. They're very, very dangerous. They'll eat you. But a child shall put his hand on the beast, the terrifying mythological creature's den. And they shall not hurt in all my holy mountain, nor destroy. Catholic and Reformed, Roman and Protestant, Republican and Democrat, liberal and conservative. All of these must be reconciled, must understand one another if they are to know comfort. Comfort is not a warm, cuddly, fuzzy feeling. As I've said before, in the Bayer tapestry that depicts the Battle of Hastings and the invasion, Anglo-Saxons and Normans, honestly, they do cause trouble, that depicts the invasion there, there is a depiction of the king with his troops and he's holding a spear, standing behind them, holding a spear and jabbing at them, pushing them forward into battle. And it says underneath, the king comforts his troops. Comfort is not a warm, fuzzy feeling. It is to be inspired, to move forward, to know strength, come forth fortitude, to be inspired, to have faith, to have courage, to be right on the edge, and to know the divine. Garlic and sapphires in the mud clot the bedded axle tree. The trilling wire in the blood sings below inveterate scars, appeasing long forgotten wars. He shall come down like rain upon the mown grass. Was there ever such a domestic picture as mown grass? even as the drops that water the earth. The moon, symbol of polytheism, the pagan cult of the worship of the moon at the heart of monotheistic Judaism. In his time shall the righteous flourish, yea, and abundance of peace so long as the moon endureth. Comfort, comfort ye my people, speak ye peace. Thus saith the Lord, comfort those who sit in darkness, mourning neath their sorrows load. In the name of God, who is Father, Son and Holy Ghost. Amen.